I'm always glad to welcome back my friend Ann Coulter, the syndicated columnist and the author most recently of Resistance is Futile, how the Trump-hating left has lost its collective mind to the point where the New York Times has decided to even go out and bash on Jeff Sessions, who, if anybody within the Trump administration could be described as one of the biggest thorns in the president's side, I think Jeff Sessions wins the prize, doesn't he, Ann? Yes, he does. And I love these quotes. I mean, the Department of Justice is obviously a very important department, but it's true just across the federal government. The career employees, the ones who are there year in, year out, um, are all left-wing activists, or 99 percent of them are. Uh, And this has been going on. I've worked in Washington at the Department of Justice um, and and for the Senate Judiciary Committee. This has gone on certainly my entire lifetime. When a Democrat's in office, oh, the career employees are very happy and they can push through crazy ideas and and put the brakes on on local law enforcement, Um, you know, sell, sell sell guns to Mexican drug cartels. Um, But when a Republican administration comes in, I distinctly remember this back during the Reagan administration, you have all the career employees calling into the New York Post and the New York Times denouncing the the Republican appointees and, oh, they're such, they're oafs, they're ignoramuses, it's outrageous, everything they're trying to do. But there's one in particular, of course, this has continued even with um, more alacrity and, and venom with Trump as president. Um, but this one in the New York Times just got me because this guy, James Buckingham, um, is bragging about how he left left the Department of Justice because you know, there was an unreasonable request from, from the attorney general that came to him. The attorney general actually requested that an attorney at the Department of Justice do legal research, which was enraging enough. But the legal research was, hey, is there anything we can do about these sanctuary cities? As you and your listeners surely know well, sanctuary cities are cities that are um, making sure that that illegal immigrants, um, sometimes regular immigrants, depending on what the felony is, who are convicted of felonies and thus deportable, are not deported. For example, the the one who shot state Kate Steinle and killed her, um, they're putting all kinds of roadblocks in the way. They, re- they refuse to cooperate with ICE, and you know they have statements coming out and, and announcing these things, often pa- passing laws. We won't cooperate with with ICE. Um, prosecutors in these states and cities, uh, if if there's an illegal immigrant. Um, who's who's charged with a crime or should be charged with a crime, they won't charge them at all or they'll charge them with lesser offenses. That's that's all the rage in California to make sure there is no conviction that could lead to a deportation. Um, it's really just the most incredible corruption of the public trust to be sending these criminals out out into their communities to continue to mug, rape, um, and assault, sell drugs to their own constituents. Their own constituents, if they're arrested for any of these things, they won't get the benefit of a, a, a reduced charge or no charge at all. You're treated much better by prosecutors in these sanctuary jurisdictions um, if you're a non-citizen, if you're an illegal immigrant, than if you're a United States citizen. Um, boy, wow, talk about, talk about privilege. We have illegal immigrant privilege. Um, so there is, of course, a law that, that prohibits uh, abetting a felon or, or, or a crime, actually, any crime, after the fact. It's been all in the news. This is what they want to get Trump for, for the non-existent Russian collusion. Uh, right there, Section 3 of the Federal Criminal Code, but, but James... Buckingham <laughs> couldn't make it to Section 3, never got there. Oh, it's crazy. There's no way we can go after the sanctuary cities. Yeah, it took me six seconds on on, on, on Google on Google to find accessory after the fact. Well, and Ann, you pointed out, and I remember the fight where Arizona said, if you're not going to enforce the immigration laws, we, Arizona, will under a good governor. And the Obama administration fought it tooth and nail, and at least in the courts won, and they won under the premise that only the federal government can enforce immigration laws. And you would think that 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 would make a very clear path. The other thing that occurred to me, you're a lawyer, as you point out in the column, and as we pointed out before, but isn't there an equal protection issue here? I don't suppose the rest of us who are legal citizens of the United States could bring a massive, uh, you know, a case uh, against a class action case saying we are being denied equal treatment under the law if a certain class of people gets one kind of treatment under the law and American citizens get lesser treatment, believe it or not. That's actually a really great idea. One of the grounds on which it's illegal to discriminate 
to discriminate is place of birth and nationality. Um, in this case, I mean, the assumption was you'd be discriminating against people who weren't your fellow citizens. No, it's just the exact opposite. Um, people who are not our fellow citizens who commit crimes are being treated better by prosecutors, are less likely to be charged um, with charged at all or charged with uh, the maximum crime they could be charged with in order to to make sure they stay here. We got to keep the criminals here. Well, and and you know that there are at least a couple of places in America they're going to have a vote on this on November the 6th to get rid of sanctuary status, and I think the voters are going to vote to get rid of it. But how do we convince, say, the New York Times, which thinks that it's terrible that Jeff Sessions would go to one of his deputies and say, would you please research this, and then and then that the New York Times is an outrage when the deputy comes back and says, no, I couldn't find anything like that in the law, and you find it in six seconds on Google. It's 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 pretty amazing, but there is an element on the left. Uh, it, it's been with us for a long time who just hate America, whether they were um, you know selling selling or giving nuclear secrets to the Soviet Union, rooting for the Soviet Union over our own country, um, to today where they are rooting for the caravan to come across. They just want to destroy the country. Now I think most elected Democrats. Um, aren't that hateful, aren't driven by a passion to destroy our country, uh, but they're certainly bucked up by those people. And, and the position of most elected Democrats is, um, number one, uh, the, the, the masses of third worlders um, pouring into our country, oh, well, look, they vote for the Democrats. We're all for them. And number two, it's just gotten to the point that whatever Trump is for, they are against. It's worth mentioning that not very long ago, Harry Reid, Diane Feinstein, even Barack Obama were against this influx of illegal immigrants bringing their pathologies, um, their poverty, their medical problems to our country when we have our own people with pathologies, poverty, and health problems that we need to take care of. And, and in fact, we've been running that soundbot. I mean, it's, it's amazing that the New York Times has forgotten the great Barack Hussein Obama. Uh, we simply cannot allow people to pour into the United States undetected, undocumented, unchecked, and circumventing the line of people who are waiting patiently, diligently, and lawfully uh, to become immigrants in this country. I guess the editors over at the Old Gray Lady just forgot all about that happening just a couple of years ago. And congratulations on the success of Resistance is Futile, how the Trump-hating left has lost its collective mind, and I appreciate your time tonight. Good to talk to you, Lars. Nice to talk to you as well. That's Ann Coulter with us.